Good morning, family. First of all, I want to welcome you for braving the snowstorm and making it here this morning. Welcome, family, friends, and for people who don't know me, my name is Roger Bennett, and I want to thank Fenton for allowing me to speak today and prepare our hearts uh, so we could take communion. Um, I wanted to share with you a tradition that we do for New Year's, um, generally with the Nesbitts. Uh, we usually plan uh, something to do with New Year's because our kids would be at hats so that we didn't have to worry about them. So we would plan a trip. Well, this year we planned a trip to go to New Orleans. One of the highlights of that trip was the World War II Museum. So I'm going to give you guys a little snippet of uh, some facts about uh, what I learned uh, during that time. Th this place had some amazing rooms. As you enter there, there was a train room that uh, acted as if you were a brand new recruit going to your, to your station, and they had um, dialogue of the people and, and their thoughts of what they were doing. They also had a room uh, that was separated from the Asian Pacific War, the European, D-Day. It was just amazing. You, it almost took, it took a full day to do it, and you could actually spend two days there. But while visiting this museum, it's opened my eyes to the whole world, not just the United States. <clears throat> As I looked around the many rooms, I saw so many different nationalities from all walks of life, just as interested in learning as I was. We were reminded of how evil the Japanese emperor and Hitler really were, and how they planned to take over the whole world together. It became very clear that something drastic had to be done to eliminate these tyrants. At the time, the United States was in a deep depression. Our, mil our military was considered inept in the eyes of the world powers. We were ranked <clears throat> 18th in the world. That's hard to believe, 18th. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, it was apparent that the United States had to come up with a massive plan to become a nation not to be considered weak anymore. People signed up in record numbers to enlist in the armed forces. Everyone came together to help our nation become strong again. We produced a seaworthy battleship every 30 days. Just to give you an idea where America was before entering the war, in 1939, the total aircraft production for the US military was less than 3,000 planes. By the end of the war in 1945, America produced over 300 thousand planes. It was the greatest military industrial effort in history. Aircraft manufacturing went from a distant 41st place among American industries to first place in less than five years. No war was more industrialized than World War II. It was a war won as much by machine shops as it was by machine guns. This incredible sacrifice, dedication, and commitment was honestly immeasurable. The word sacrifice has several inspiring meanings. As a noun, it means atonement or offering. As a verb, it means to endure, suffer, lose, or surrender. As an antonym, it means deny or withhold. Please turn with me to 1 John chapter 2. I'll be reading verses 1 and 2. The Apostle John writes to the Christian believers, My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for our sins, but also for the sins of the whole world. God's holiness demands punishment for man's sin. God, therefore, out of love, sent his son to make a substitutionary atonement for the believer's sin. People from all countries got involved to help out, to help put an end to the oppressed tyranny. The war wasn't just men, but women and children got involved to do their part to make a difference. In Ephesians 5, uh, verses 1 and 2, Paul wrote to the people of Ephesus, be imitators of God 
therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us, and gave himself up as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. Be imitators. One good way of imitating God is to have a forgiving spirit. The sacrificial way Jesus expressed his love for us is not only the means of salvation, but also as an example of the way we are to live for the sake of others. At the end of the war, the devastation was simply horrific. The sacrifice was beyond significant. Many fought battles that they knew they would not come back from, but did it anyway. They also did this so we could all have a better future. World War II was the most destructive and largest in loss of life in history. When it was finally over, the number of casualties was a staggering 65 million worldwide. I don't know if anyone knew that. That shocked me. That is a quarter of the population of the United States, if, to put things in perspective. Many people during the Holocaust lost generations of families. In finishing, 1 John chapter 4, 7 through 10, John writes, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed us his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we, we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Let's pray. Father, uh, at times we can't understand the sacrifice that your perfect son, Jesus, came down to suffer, knowing, just like these men and women went into battle knowing they wouldn't come back, he knew what was going to happen that day and still did it. Uh, it's hard to fathom that at times, God, knowing how much he would suffer, and he still did it because he loves us. Father, help us to be uh, not more than grateful but to be life-changing and to think of others above ourselves. Think of how we can help others, just as Jesus and his atoning sacrifice was for us. God, as we take this bread, which represents Jesus' broken body, and the juice, which represents his blood shed for the forgiveness of our sins, for the forgiveness of the sins of the whole world, not just the United States, the whole world, God. He would have died for every one of us individually if it was just us. But God, thank you for that incredible gift. Thank you for the gift of eternity that you have for, uh, for us and a plan. Thank you so much for your um, blessed gift of Jesus. And we pray everything in his precious and holy name. Amen. Uh, we will have communion at the tables. So um, if anyone wants to stay in their seats, please raise your hand.